Hey guys, Hydrox8 here, and welcome to the true endgame that is Fashion Train. Now this week, we will be customising the Queen of Mind Control herself, Nyx Prime. Nyx Prime is the Prime variant of the Warframe Nyx. She offers gold adornments that is typically seen on the Prime variants on her head, chest, ribcage, shoulder blades, arms and spine. Now, let's talk helmets. Nyx Prime has her own unique Prime helmet, but as with all Prime frames, she can actually use all helmets available to the normal frame itself. The Prime helmet is a gold crown that is reminiscent of the Aliens franchise, and it's one of the reasons I actually like this helmet. I think it's a true Orkin go big or go home, and it's a perfect helmet to wear to a ceremony to murder all of your masters. Now, you may notice that the motif is repeated on her thighs also, and you can see the true detailing work of the artists coming through this model. Now take note that some of the alternate helmets may have a visible line where they intersect with the neck and this can be very very clear in some light colour schemes and I'll be showing all possibilities with all of the helmets at the end of the video in my colour schemes section. Moving on to skins now, Nyx Prime can have three skins, the default skin which you see here, the immortal skin and the nemesis skin. The Immortal skin is by default black and green but can be coloured, it's one of my favourite skins, I believe there's a lot of detail in it and a lot of accents. And the Nemesis skin was an original limited time edition skin but now is a permanent edition in the market. It's a throwback to the original Warframes in Dark Sector which was the kind of spiritual predecessor to the current game we have now. And we're going to show her now with the Nyx skin and the Nyx helmet so you can get a feel for the whole entire thing if you do not have it already. Let's move on to the part that everyone likes, the colouring. So we kind of always break down the basics for people who don't really know how to colour Warframes. And I also suggest starting with a light colour for the, like, this part is an accent, it's not the main part of the, of the body. So we always start with a light colour. And if they're more humanoid Warframes, it's similar with the main body colour. I don't like seeing vivid colours, which are like the hot pink from the X-Mist that are covering the body. Go for more lighter, desaturated colours. And here we can see, as the accents build up, like here we have mo uh, kind of like a, a th thin lines that go out the body. They can be a real pop of colour to kind of give a more emphasis to the lighter colours and really draw them out. And for these little dots here on the back and the front, they're small. So once again, colour is useful in small qualities. And it's also similar for the actual energy colour we can have as well. Go bright so you'll be able to see your effects and be able to see the true animation and the whole kind of particles that can go with your Warframe. Now onto the Immortal skin we go. They follow the same principles, we always start light with the smallest accent. We have here light blue, light lilacs, kind of yellows, nudes. I'm a personal fan, I love the kind of nude colours on Warframes, I think it really brings a whole new dimension to it. And as we go up the actual layers to secondary, this one since there's more skin showing and it's a different vibe, you can go a bit darker. You know, if there's an accent colour, you want to go a bit darker again. That's kind of what we always, always build up in layers, lighter darker depending on the Warframe. For this Nyx alternate skin, because it's quite separated all throughout, we can have a thin kind of inside body, small colour, very light, very pale, work up a bit more vivid and then with these accents that the Immortal skins are famous for, we can have a real pop of colour that either amplifies what we have or contrasts in a more pleasant way. So if you have a yellow and a blue, you know, contrasting colours that work together. And similarly here, these colours for these kind of small, very thin accents I usually keep very close to the energy colour so we can kind of have more sporadic colour throughout it. When colouring the Nemesis skin now, we also have to keep in mind the theme. The theme is very kind of infested, slightly mecha warrior in a sense, because you see all the metal, metallic kind of features. This is keeping the tones, the tones are very dark, they're very desaturated, so that's why I'm keeping here, the blues, the greens, the purples. Never go full white on these colour frames, always go an off-white, so in like the smoke palette, go down four or five lines, four or five rows to get a kind of off-white. They usually work best here. And you can see in this second layer, those kind of desaturated colours, they work best and really kind of fit with the theme of the Nemesis skin. Now, let's show some customizations I have here that are without attachments. We'll be dealing with attachments and other colour schemes with attachments later on in the video. So I have all the colours here, their palette, the column they're on, and the row they're on. So, enjoy!
Now, I'm showing here some of the attachments that I think work best with Nyx Prime from Cyandana's to actually this little armor itself. I think the Armulukai Raptor skin, those gold beads really bring out the kind of Warframe color. But there's also stuff like these capes. If they're more of a silky texture, they look really good with the Prime Warframes and they can really look realistic. I'm not a fan of how the top of the cape kind of comes down from the neck and has like a little hunchback effect. But we can see the opposite here, how the Palatine Cyandana actually works with the neckline. So it goes down the back, there's a spike, but not an actual lump. And I find this a lot better to kind of look at. Now, the Salix Cyandana is one of my favorite Cyandanas there is in the game. I love the kind of design at the back. And we're going to see here now. These clipping issues can occur when you're moving crazy like I just did with the cursor. Now, these two rows on the Orkin palette are the ones that I use most. They kind of really fit in, but if you go too dark, it'll look okay in the Lisette, but when you're outside in the actual tile sets, they come out a lot darker, a lot more vivid than they actually are. And you can see here with the Prisma Yamiko, it's slightly different, but it all looks so much better, so much more authentic. Similar to the Pakal. This color looks fine at the moment, but it's very dark once you go out in this, into the actual tile sets and can be a bit weird. Now this next little scheme I have here is one that actually came out to me last night. I thought it was quite cool. It reminds me of like a jet fighter, but literally fighter as in like this fighter. And I'm going to show you now some more color schemes with some more attachments. Um, this one here is my actual one I use in game. And as usual, let, these are just examples. If you know, let me know if you like them. Let me know if you're your own creation. You can tweet me at hydroxate, or just let me know in the comments. And these are the color schemes I use. These are the attachments I use. And I will see you next time. And as always, take care.